in my opinion, as of right now, is my pick for Rookie of the Year this upcoming season. Now, like I just said, James Wiseman is going to be starting for the Warriors. And, again, he's starting. That's a plus. He's going to play on the Warriors, a very good team that have playoff contention. That's another plus. And on the Warriors, on a good team, starting. And he's going to be contributing a lot to that team. He's going to be very high usage, a lot of points, rebounds defensively. He's going to be. He's going to look really good playing in that that Warrior system with Steve Kerr, Draymond, Clay, uh, Steph Curry there. And he's going to be, you know, getting a lot of rebounds, having to, you know, clean up the boards with Steph and Kelly Oubre and Andrew Wiggins. I think it's going to make him look really good the way they're going to play this year. And in my opinion, I think it will be enough to be the Rookie of the Year now. Um, LaMelo is obviously a very good pick. You know, he's definitely going to get a lot of rebounds. He's definitely going to be very flashy. Showtime, he might be the most fun to watch. But watching his preseason game so far this year, you can tell that the offensive game is going to take him a couple more years, just like how Alonzo is right now. He is going to need to start to learn how to be a smarter shooter, when to pick his shots, things like that. And I think that will come with time, obviously. But right now, he looks very good. But I guess we'll just have to see how that goes on. I think maybe LaMelo will be like one of the second half rookie of the year cases where, you know, one rookie has a really good first half and okay second half. One rookie has an okay first half but a really great second half to make that push for the rookie of the year case. That might be LaMelo. And then when Anthony Edwards, I think Anthony Edwards may be a very nice player, solid player. He might be the most all-around player, but, 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 playing on the Minnesota Timberwolves is going to obviously not be the thing uh, this year so far. I've said before, I can really see them being in maybe the playing spot at the, the, the ninth and 10th seed, playing the 8th and 7th seed in the playoff uh, playing series, and that'd be really fun to see, but the Warriors obviously very much have a chance to be 8th, 7th, 6th seed uh, this year in the playoffs, maybe even 5th. Um, so I think with the team being so good and being a very valuable starter on that team, I feel like he has, in my opinion, the biggest chance to win Rookie of the Year. He's also obviously a very complete player, being a seven-footer who's only like 19 years old. The dude looks already looks NBA body ready. We just need to see him play a little bit more. I think he's actually not playing preseason right now, which is kind of scary to think about. But I think that was, this, it will be easy for him to contribute to that team very easily. Um, they make everyone look good on the Warriors, especially in, in Steve Kerr's system, so I think, in my opinion, James Wiseman, Rookie of the Year, this upcoming season. And next up, next up, next up, we are gonna go with, let's go with most improved player, most improved player, most improved player. And in my opinion, the most improved, some dark horses for this award, let's do that first. Um, most improved. Man, this is actually a lot tougher to think of. Um, I actually don't know. I obviously have my number one guy. I've had this guy. I've said it many times before, him being the most improved player, because this team really needs him to be. Um, maybe DeAndre Ayton. That's a good one. I think DeAndre Ayton being the sort of small head of the three-headed monster that are in the Phoenix Suns um, with him and uh, Booker and Chris Paul. I feel like him playing alongside Chris Paul, very smart, great passing guard. It's going to give him a lot of looks and touches. I feel like he definitely has an opportunity to be the most improved player. He might be going on averaging 20, 22, 23 points per game, 10 plus rebounds, a couple blocks. I think he's going to look really good playing alongside Chris Paul. So there's my dark horse pick for most improved player. Um, yeah, I think that's like that's a really good one. But my pick, my actual pick for most improved player is Michael Porter Jr. from the Denver, 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 Denver. 
last year besides the bubble. So he, he's able to be Rookie of the Year next year. Uh, but Michael Porter Jr., man, he has to be that 15, a 20-point per game score. Very good perimeter defender. Uh, and that's it. That's really all he has to do. He has to be able to defend and score. He doesn't need to facilitate. He doesn't need to be doing this, that, or the other. All he needs to do is defend and put up good numbers on offense. And that's it. And I think if he does that on a good winning record Nuggets team, which obviously they're going to be probably a top four seed this upcoming year, I think they'll have enough to get it done. And uh, yeah, it'll be most improved player. One of the biggest sort of giveaways for Michael Porter Jr. in my sort of case is obviously his stat line. This past year, he only played, uh, let's see here, 16. 16, he played 16 minutes per game last year and only averaged 9 points. Uh, half a block, half a steal, uh, and 5 rebounds. So, you double that, obviously, giving him 30 minutes. You give him, you know, 18 you give him a block, a steal, you give him about 10 rebounds. If you look at his uh, per 36, which is usually the one, the measurement, a lot of, a lot, a lot of teams, statistical guys look at, he averages 20.4 points per game over a block, over a steal, and 10 and a half rebounds a game. He shot 83% from the line and 42% from three. That looks absolutely amazing. So let's say they give him 33, 32 minutes per game, uh, obviously being the starter for the team now, you're looking at a very big jump, obviously doubling everything, and I think he does deserve to be the starter, I think he deserves 30 plus minutes per game, I think you don't need to be worrying about his injury or anything like that anymore, um, I'm very excited to see where this kid goes, and in the bubble, he looked good, he looked like he is a very capable player where you can just throw him the ball get out the way and he can get you a bucket and that's what a lot of other players in the league don't have they have to be at the right place at the right time and this that and the other he looks like a guy you can just boom give him the ball go off the dribble and just go and get you a bucket and on the defensive end obviously he's a big 6'9 6'10 forward very lengthy he looks like he can defend very well as well so as long as he puts you know his head to the ground and doesn't really complain a lot like he did in the bubble he didn't really complain but you know keeping to himself, do the better of the team, not to yourself, and does what he has to do. I feel like Michael Porter Jr. is going to be the most improved player next year. Obviously, like I said before, Aiden is probably my second dark horse for that. Not a dark horse, but my second player. Obviously, going to the Phoenix Suns, who are going to be a lot better than they were the prior year. So, um, yeah, Michael Porter Jr., most, most improved player. Next up, we're going to be doing the Coach of the Year, and in my opinion coach of this upcoming year, I think is gonna be, hmm, this one I actually haven't even thought of a lot of, I was thinking about all the other, all the other categories, but this one I forgot that was kind of on the list that we had to talk about. I am gonna go with, I'm gonna go with a coach who is always recognized as being one of the best in the league. And has been with this team for a very long time. Doesn't really get a lot of recognition. Recognition. I think that's how you say the word. Uh, I'm going to go with Rick Carlisle from the Dallas Mavericks for the coach of the year. And I only say this because I very much love what they did to the team. They definitely added a lot more talent than lost. They are getting their player back that they got hurt last year. I think his name was Jordan Powell. His last name is Powell. He's a good forward for them. I think he's going to be playing a lot better uh, uh, this year than he did last year. Obviously, he was hurt uh, last year for the playoffs and stuff. So, that's going to be good. Hopefully, Chris Tops is good and healthy. Hopefully, Luca has a very good, very good, very good season. And I could see them going from, you know, I think they were a seventh seed last year to I think they can improve all the way to being the third seed, second seed, fourth seed. I can see them being very, very, very good this year being on a very good team with a very good player and obviously Kristaps playing very well I feel like Rick Carlisle might be a good pick for coach of the year so plus they always they usually always give it to someone new every uh, every couple of years uh you know they don't really keep doing the same coach over and over and over and over 
Alright, so we have the Celtics are again. One, two, three, four seed. Very good, playing very well, have a very great season. I think Brad Stevens is maybe my number two pick. He's always a very smart coach, he's always in one of the, you know, best coach in the league discussions. So I'm gonna say Rick Carlisle. I'm gonna say Brad Stevens. And can I think of anyone else? They always sometimes always pick a, a coach that has a very bad team but plays very well. So maybe like Monty Williams. I'm not saying the Suns are a bad team, but having a new team put together, I think Monty Williams definitely has a potential. He's sort of like the dark horse pick uh, of being coach of the year. But I really like the pick of Rick Carlisle. Watch out for that one. Okay, so next up we're gonna do. Uh, let's do defensive player of the year because I think this one is maybe a little bit less uh, it's, it's definitely anticlimactic in my opinion because obviously there are a lot of great players a lot of great defensive players in the league and Giannis won it last year he definitely has potential to be you know a back to back back to back back to back back to back defensive player of the year and also a back to back obviously MVP but I think <laughs> last year a lot of people who gave the award out regretted, 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 regretted not giving this award to my winner of this next upcoming season's Defensive Player of the Year award, Anthony Davis. So, if Anthony Davis literally just does the same thing he did last year, I feel like he will win Defensive Player of the Year. So, I think this year, Anthony Davis is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, obviously, Giannis is definitely in contention. Rudy Gobert, always in contention. I love that guy. I love his defense. Um, maybe, like, Kawhi is definitely in there as well. Maybe Bam Adebayo. That's a good Targos one as well. Bam Adebayo was going crazy on defense in the, in the bubble, in the playoffs, uh, in the finals, too. Um, so, I'm going to say definitely Anthony Davis, Giannis, and then Bam, Rudy Gobert. I think those are my four. I know that's a lot of names, but... Those are definitely the, the top guys, at least in my opinion. Then maybe like Kawhi, you could throw in there as well. But um, those are mine. But I think Anthony Davis, obviously, has actually put up what uh, pull up what Anthony Davis did last year. He averaged 26 points per game, nine rebounds, and three assists to fourth in PER, which is pretty crazy. And he averaged two, 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 two and a half blocks and one and a half steals for a guy who is nearly seven foot, averaging nearly steals is crazy. Two and a half blocks. Absolutely beautiful. He also shot 33% from the field. 84% from the line. 50% from the uh, from the field. That's that's definitely crazy. And then if you look at his post game, post game, his uh, postseason stats, he averaged a block and a half and a steal and a half. So he's even in, in, in the, the playoffs, he was playing very well on defense as well. So I think as long as Anthony Davis can just do, literally do what he did last year, that's all he has to do. He doesn't have to do anything better. If he just did what he did last year, he wins Defensive Player of the Year. Um, I really like that pick. I think Bam, and now that I said Bam, Bam is definitely a big contender for Defensive Player of the Year this upcoming year. He's definitely going to be a player who takes a very big step. And uh, if you saw last year, my last video, Bam on ESPN's Top 100 list was like, he's a top 15 player second center in the NBA so ESPN a lot of people who work in ESPN obviously get votes and if they see Bam being this high up and making the big, a big jump like that the Delhi is also in contention so Bam Anthony Davis but I'm taking Anthony Davis to win defensive player of the year we also have the six man of the year award and in my opinion this six man of the year award is going to go to a player who is going to be playing and contributing on a very good team it usually always goes to that um obviously going to lou williams who was on a playoff team then Montrose harrell who was on a playoff team and this upcoming year is going to be a playoff team as well and in my opinion the six man of the year award is going to go to karis levert from the brooklyn nets and the only reason why i'm saying karis levert is because if Karras was starting and Spencer Dinwiddie was coming off the bench, then Spencer Dinwiddie would be the sixth man of the year. Whoever one of those players are not starting or 
are going to win Sixth Man of the Year because, if you don't know, both of those players are easily, easily starters on a lot of NBA teams. Um, last season, Karis LeVert averaged uh, 19 points per game, 4 rebounds, and 4.5 and assists. For a dude going to be coming off the bench this next season, that's going to be crazy good. He shot 36% from 3. And let's see what else he did. Uh, over a steal a game as well. Shot 71% from the free throw line. That's pretty bad, actually, but 43% from the field. This dude is a scoring, scoring, scoring machine. He can also play very good defense when he wants to, but it's usually all the time. So he's a very good sort of all-around player. Um, so I really like that. But like I said before, if he ends up starting, which I watched their preseason game, and he wasn't, so I'm assuming he's going to be coming off the bench this upcoming year. So I'm going to pick him for six man. Obviously with Spencer Dinwiddie, if he was coming off the bench, Spencer Dinwiddie is literally the same type of player with that much potential of being a great starter in the NBA. So um, they're going to be a great team. They're going to be a finals contending team, a championship contending team. He's going to be coming off the bench. He's going to get a lot of touches, lots of minutes. He gets, he's going to be their number one scorer once, you know, obviously Katie or Kyrie are not playing. So, uh, and he looked really good in the bubble. Obviously, the last game they played was with the Blazers, and he lit the Blazers up, and hopefully he continued to do that this upcoming year. So, I think either one of them is probably my pick for six man, and I'm assuming it's going to be Karras because he sat and didn't start in their preseason game. So, I'm going to pick Karras Avert as six man of the year. And last, but certainly, certainly not least, we are picking the MVP of this upcoming year. And in my opinion, the MVP of the 2020-2021 season is going to be... be, 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 be. Luka Doncic from the Dallas Mavericks, which ties into... Coach of the Year, Rick Carlisle. I think the Dallas Mavericks are going to have a very successful year this year. And that's also going to be coaching, doing, going to the coach and the role players and the acquisitions and the Chris Porzingis play. But most importantly, because of Luka Doncic having an MVP season, I'm going to say Luka plays just as good, maybe even a slight tick from what he did last year. He averaged... 28.8 points per game, 9.4 rebounds, and 8.8 assists last year. Even if he takes a short little, like, dink, he'll still be averaging, what, 27, 26 points per game, and 7-ish assists, 7-ish rebounds. Like, that's still crazy numbers. I'm surprised he didn't win MVP last year, obviously, because Giannis was on a killer, on a killer team. Obviously an amazing player, but as you guys know, the league does not like giving MVP out that easy. And I do not think, even if Giannis had the exact same style of season playing on a team just as good with just as good record, there's no way the, MV, uh, the NBA gives out the MVP award to Giannis three straight years. Like, there's no way that ever happens, because if that happens, I would cry wolf about LeBron. LeBron deserved MVP for like four or five straight years, and they didn't let LeBron barely get it two times in a row. So I don't think the NBA would give Giannis, even if he had the exact same season, MVP again. Um, so with that being said, like I said with Rick Carlisle and the Mavericks, I like their team. I like their acquisitions. I think they're a very good squad right now. I think they'll be a top four seed. And if Luka plays the exact same way that he did, he will be the MVP plus like the NBA loves Luka. Everyone loves Luka. I love Luka. You probably love Luka. I mean, everyone loves Luka. I think it's his time to be MVP. And it's going to be super crazy. It's going to be super awesome. I think he will deserve it. And yeah, that's my pick for MVP. Um, Dark Horse, just like we talked about, a three straight year Giannis. That's, I mean, it's plausible. It's very, it can happen. Uh, but I just don't think it will. I think it, the, NBA, the NBA will just, I don't think that will ever happen. Uh, a three straight year NBA MVP. That's that's a crazy feat. Uh, even if he played the exact same sort of year. Um, is there sort of a dark horse pick I can think of? Um, man, I don't think LeBron can win it. That, that That's just not what LeBron needs in his career right now. I think LeBron's just trying to title up, you know. He's trying to get some finals MVP. MVP, you feel me? So I don't think LeBron is going to be in it. Uh, Anthony Davis could, but I think a defensive player of the year is definitely more his fit. And 
maybe if Kevin Durant just like goes god awful crazy and just uh, wreaks havoc on the NBA from his uh, injury, that's plausible. Or if I said before in one of my videos, Steph Curry, if Steph Curry just literally just takes every shot for the Warriors, doesn't care, just plays freely, just plays fun, just plays whatever, Steph can definitely be a very good dark horse pick for MVP this year. But in my opinion, Luka Doncic, MVP for next year. So we have MVP Luka, six-man 